explain uh, uh, i think everybody know this topic behavior of ac blocks ac blocks are also called as autoclave aerated concrete blocks so autoclave aerated concrete blocks um, now at least in the past 10 years it's very very very, uh, very well known in an industrial area okay especially in a design uh, we point a structural design we point this is considered one of the uh, best concrete blocks for partition walls uh, obviously along with that there are a lot of problems we have faced um, we are still now also we are seeing a lot of problems uh, associated with this um, asc blocks but how asc block become a widely used material is something i'm going to discuss in the starting then the properties of asc blocks then the manufacturing of asc blocks then comes to the research happening in that area right now so uh, before going to this i just want to give you an idea i did actually phd from it madras so there i did a study on beam slab systems i, I do remember professor devadas menon has been given um, a lecture not now maybe around 6 months before in same institute so he was discussing about my research topic there so he was discuss before that he actually told me he is going to discuss this topic uh, so again uh, in that view point also i'm happy that he has been discussed something in my own phd work uh, in a same forum before uh, so uh, aac blocks how this become so popular is uh, in a view point of structural uh, any structural uh, building any building comes or any any structure comes uh, the basic thing now the key word people look forward is sustainable construction every material we use need to be sustainable so if you look into most of the institutes which is right now growing will have a motto of having a sustainable uh, construction in their own campus even our own campus got uh, two awards in sustainable construction we have adopted a lot of uh, details especially starting from building to the uh, usage of electricity power water we have adopted a lot of innovative technologies in our campus to make it sustainable so sustainable construction is the key word uh, really speaking a uh, uh, fantasy word in the world of structural engineering so sustainable construction you point ac block is one of the best material why it is because obviously as you uh, all of you know briefly uh, ac block is a lightweight material so in that you point it is using very less material and release of carbon dioxide is uh, reduced a lot of other uh, important points are there that makes this material sustainable but before beyond that a structural engineer sustainable even though if it is a key word or fashion in the world of structural engineering or a material science uh, it is very difficult for a structural engineer to always adopt the sustainable point of view we always think about a strength point of view or serviceability point of view when we design a system so beyond that when we come to a structural viewpoint okay why a lightweight construction is so important is when it comes to seismic behavior of that building we would be able to control the behavior and we will be able to provide a better um, house for, uh, house or if we are, we are, if we are dealing with the building uh, we could provide a better um, residential uh, space for uh, common life uh, for the social life so here in the seismic behavior point of view what happens here is when you have a acceleration or when you have a ground motion coming to the system at that time depends on the weight of the system you will have an inertia force in the system so if that inertia force the intensity of inertia force is the main keyword in the seismic behavior where if you could control the inertia inertia force you could able to control the seismic behavior of the system so obviously everybody know inertia force the main contribution is comes from the mass of the system so as less the mass of the system we would be able to control the seismic behavior of the system so in that viewpoint lightweight bricks are actually come up it started from around 20th century there are a lot of lightweight br uh, bricks people are using and people have been used and this lightweight bricks uh, when it comes to its uh, uh, in its behavior aspect or um, performance aspect the first thing we look into it it's lightweight because it will give uh, less mass to the system 
the seismic behavior will be better the performance will be better you have a sustainable construction obviously it's a lightweight bucket material so the material involvement in that itself is less so in that viewpoint sustainable construction and seismic behavior all come together here there are a lot of aspects of lightweight material so one of the lightweight material is asc blocks so just want to show you how it is light so if you see a clay brick fly ash bricks and asc blocks if you compare the density of these material these are some definite numbers i have used but there is always a range comes out for a density viewpoint you have a density high clay bricks have a very high density around 18 kilo newton per meter cube but when it comes to asc blocks it is more than uh, at least 50 percent is less than that so but uh, i am saying here 8 kilo newton per meter cube but it's not a definite number it's a range it's a variation and depends on the process we are adopting the density of material will vary depends on the pores we are creating the material density will vary so as less dense the material we could able to have a better performance in seismic behavior the inertia force come to the system would be much less and i'm not going in detail of seismic behavior of um, uh, and in building which which has been filled with asc blocks that's not the aim here here the behavior in terms of ac block i'm going into in depth okay <clears throat> so as ac block i say what does that aa represent autoclave aerated concrete so autoclave is called uh, normally it is defined as steam curing at a maximum ambient temperature generally between 170 to 215 degrees celsius so this is a definition given by is2184 uh, so if you refer to is2184 they are not really talking about the ac concrete block we are dealing with but they are talking about what is an autoclaved um, blocks how do we create it so how autoclave uh, process has been done so there are some justifications they have given so in that viewpoint at least a temperature of 170 to 250 has to be achieved uh, to have a, a, a steam a kind of steam curing to create a autoclave uh, blocks then obviously aerated if you take a cut off um, aerated AAC blocks, you see a lot of pores in it. If I take enlarge the view, enlarge the view of that particular area, you'll see something like this. The scale is in one mm, so you have a lot of pores in the system. So when you have pores in the system, automatically you're making it lightweight. So, but in aerated concrete itself, you have different possibilities are there in the market. Basically, formed concrete is there, autoclaved aerated concrete is there, AAC blocks and form concrete so form concrete what we use is we will use form agents okay but in case of aac uh, we are using some chemical expansive agents in basic in clear if i say aluminum powder is one of the chemical we, or the metal powder we are using to create aac block then the basic difference between form concrete and aac block is we will actually cure this in autoclave curing that means steam curing in high pressure condition so if you do a uh, steam curing in high pressure condition with an aluminum powder in the mixture, you will get an autoclave aerated concrete. But this is very brief view of how an autoclave aerated concrete is created. But in detail, if you go to the process, you'll understand that a lot of material has been involved in it. The process itself has been a lot of specifications to go through. So when you go through all this process, you'll understand that uh, at the end of it, you are getting a block which is having a property of then basically three basic properties I have explained here, which is very critical in a building viewpoint. The density, which is again, as I said before, it's varying between six to eight. If you refer some other manual of some other company, you will get some other number because uh, these development of aerated co concrete blocks, aerated um, autoclave aerated concrete blocks, when it happens, lot of company has been developed their own patents or achieved their own patents and the mixes hasn't released to the public okay so if you refer to the aerated aac blocks from one company to another company if you made a comparison the behavior aspect itself will be completely different so the mixed proportion is still a secret inside the company okay lot of patents has been gone in that uh, I'll discuss the history of that also. Before that, the property viewpoint. So the density is one of the main thing. It's varying between six to eight. Some some company even give a density much less than six also. It comes between four to eight. Uh, compressive strength, three to four MPa. 
fire resistant for our which is uh, actually good enough to take care of any fire conditions why it is so widely used of course it's lightweight in material other than that energy efficient and lower energy consumption basically uh, then the best thermal insulation will provide 6 to 10 times better than the regular concrete non toxic environmentally friendly basically because toxicity has been reduced because the amount of cement we are using has been come down in this particular case you can actually replace a major amount of uh, cement here with fly ash so then unsuppressed fire resistance is there uh, excellent sound absorption capacity is there because of the porous nature no waste of raw material is there so waste of raw material is a big problem in the case of clay brick which is not happening in the case of um, asc blocks so here Base, because of all these advantages, if you look into uh, AAC block as a building material, mostly this is used as infill walls. But it has in, of course, some cases people are recommending to use load bearing walls. But we found that as it is as a load bearing walls, uh, for a long term point of view, especially in the long term effects like creep and shrinkages, which is very significant in these bricks, which normally create failure in the system so it is better to avoid this particular brick as a long load bearing walls but it is a very suitable uh, brick material for an infill wall concept okay there you can use this particular brick as an infill wall uh, but when you when i come to the history of aac blocks what happens is it begins from 20th century okay around uh, 1880 onwards the the first the first step of step towards AAC block has happened is by uh, steam curing okay and uh, they actually even slowly developed how to do an aerating uh, of particular AAC block there were different ideas at that point of time they did even form uh, chemicals at that time forming agents has been used at that time but later it has been moved to be aluminium powder in 1914 that was the main point at which AAC block become more um, adoptable and from that viewpoint uh, once they understood that aluminium powder is a good agent to create um, pore, enough pores in the brick then they have actually moved to 1923 in that uh, time they have created autoclave process it is pressurized steam curing not exactly steam curing it they actually do the steam curing in a pressurized manner uh, pressure level but the pressure level as I discussed before all these stages a lot of patents has been uh, given from uh, at least countries from Germany uh, uh, Denmark UK these companies uh, in the, those countries a lot of companies developed and they created a lot of patents in that area so in if you look into the patent levels mostly it could be a material level patent it could be a temperature what is the temperature of autoclave what is the pressure of an autoclave? All these are very significant when it comes to how the brick performance in the uh, coming uh, years. So a lot of patents generated at that time. So basically this large scale manufacturing facility has been in 1930s in that time. A large scale uh, manufacturing facility has been set up in Sudan. There, of course, Sudan, it hasn't grown much, but later stages, Germany has been taken up, UK, and other uh, countries has been us also uh, slowly because us if you look into it mostly their structures are composite structures and uh, it is very hardly you'll find out the brick um, masonry structures there but mostly uh, they use it but it's very rare so but it has been given a push in the area uh, in the countries of uk german and uh, sudan and what happened is in the later stages it hasn't grown in that area because of some political issues but other countries has picked up this so from 2014 onwards that is very recent time okay if you see 2014 onwards ASC production facility if you see we have in in all over the world around 450 million meter cube per year we are actually having 3000 ASC production facilities are available and when it comes to India we have a lot of companies there are uh, I think more than uh, seven or six com uh, seven or eight companies would be there the prominent ones has been listed here uh, around uh, five com companies I have listed here. Here, Aircon is one of the best company and Spiro. Okay. 
uh, Ciprox is actually the company which even originated very early times when this autoclave patents has been done. That time on was uh, Ciprox was there. So a lot of companies uh, has been originated in the early times, uh, even in India also. So in 2000s, we have a good market for ASE. We, uh, we started selling this product. But basic difference between the company's product is, as I said, the combinations of material they use, the ratio of material they use, and the chemical they use is completely different. So I cannot compare a brick I'm getting from Aerocon uh, to Spiro, uh, Spiro, Spiro, uh, Ciprox. Why? Just because it's, their process is different. Uh, basically, process matters, material composition matters, and uh, uh, from that point of view, the behavioral aspect itself completely changes. So, but in general, I could say, what is the combination of raw material? But this is just a generic view to the com uh, combination of ingredients I'm using, okay? So CDM executive board has been given some guideline how the ingredient should be, but this need not be the fine number every company is using. There will be completely a different ratio they will be using. But just to give you an idea, what are the ingredients when we have, when we talk about ASC blocks, fly ash, lime, cement, and hydride, aluminum powder, and water. So here, uh, of course, fly ash, lime, cement, and anhydride is a very common uh, uh, material mix when we use for a brick point of view. But aluminum powder is an extra component which we add here to create uh, basically the pores in the system. Okay, so that is the forming agent in this point of view, we can say. Uh, then water. So if you see the total solid to water range here, solid total solid is, solid is in the range of 450 kg and water is 370 kg. So it's more or less like a slurry. When you mix it, you'll feel like it's a slurry. Okay, so uh, I'll show you a video how this really works. Just give me a minute. So I just adopted one particular video. It doesn't mean that company has been promoted here, but uh, their video is giving a pretty good idea. So decades, hope you can hear. Han has been providing intelligent solutions for the AAC industry. With the experience gained in many plants supplied worldwide, Viahan is recognized as global leader and as the most innovative solution provider in this industry. Our goal is to provide buyers with advanced technologies for cost-efficient AAC production. You're able to see my screen, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. yeah. The raw materials for AAC are all natural, like cement, lime, sand, and water. Aluminium is the gas generation agent. Quartz sand is by quantity the dominant material in AAC. Sand is ground in ball mills with the required fineness. Alternatively, pulverized fuel ash can be used. Ground sand in the form of slurry is stored in large tanks with agitators to prevent sedimentation of the sand. Aluminium, the gas generation agent, is dispersed in water. Via Han's dosing and mixing system, Vico Mix, has specially been designed for the production of AAC. Keep it, give it to a tatin. Go up and give it to a tatin. The mold can easily be cleaned and oiled because of the okay. four used walls which can be opened. A significant okay. advantage of the Viahan plant design. The molds are automatically closed and locked. Start. 
The mix expands due to the reaction of the aluminium and stiffens due to the hydration of cement and quicklime. After filling, the mold is transported to the pre-curing area. The pre-curing area is heated to speed up the chemical reactions. As soon as pre-curing is finished, the moulds are unlocked and opened automatically. The hardness of the cake and the temperature is tested. Now the cake is ready for cutting. The cake is tilted in upright position for cutting. During cutting and autoclaving, the cakes rest on specially designed autoclave pallets. No mold parts go into the autoclave as with other systems. First, the block length is cut in the side trimmer and tongue and groove are profiled when applicable. In the second step, the block or panel thickness is cut. Holes are either cut in an individual machine or integrated in the cross cutter. In the final step, the cross cutter cuts the block height or the panel length. Shortest possible wires are used to facilitate high cutting accuracy. Hans no waste system saves 4 to 5 percent raw materials in comparison to other tilt cutting systems. removed by Via Han's patented bed remover and will be recycled as return. The loading machine picks up the cut cake and puts it onto the autoclave trolley. Best possible autoclave utilization can be realized due to Veerhan's unique autoclave pallet design. A heated waiting area in front of the autoclaves helps to avoid temperature loss of the cakes prior to autoclaving. The entire autoclave process is automatically controlled by Viahan's autoclave control system, VACO. During the steam curing, the unique crystal structure is formed inside of the AAC. After autoclaving, the AAC has already gained its final strength.
autoclave trolleys are unloaded and cakes are transported to the separating machine. horizontal layers are separated, which tend to be fused together during autoclaving. Viahan offers tailor-made sorting and packing systems for blocks and panels. Here, blocks are packed on wooden pallets. A plastic cover for block protection and advertising. That's the process of AAC block manufacturing, but kind of an automated, well-developed uh, company is doing that. But if you see, there are mine, uh, some uh, miniature factories are available in India. Uh, we have even uh, the similar way or uh, completed automated systems are there, but we have miniature companies. Even Kerala has one miniature uh, factory who manufactures um, AAC blocks. I'm not exactly sure about the details of the company, but I heard very recently that uh, somebody has established uh, an AAC manufacturing fac uh, factory in Kerala. So the process, entire process involve, uh, I could say three or four steps, mixing of material, adding of aluminium, then uh, a pre-curing stage, cutting and autoclave, and uh, the end of the end product. So here, the main difference between any concrete block to, uh, this AAC blocks are adding the aluminium. Aluminium is the kind of material which actually create the gas in the system which eventually creates pores in the material. So that process has been explained in a flowchart manner here but the video was well uh, and clear. So I'm not going in detail of what is the matter is happening inside it and the chemical reactions also most of you may not be interested to know. But here uh, as I said the main key thing in the or AAC block manufacturing is, is the autoclave duration and the temperature, uh, duration, temperature and the pressure what we are maintaining. So uh, depends on company to company, this will vary. This max light group, uh, I know uh, their details. So according to them, they are using seven to eight hours of autoclaving uh, for 190 degrees Celsius and 12 bar pressure. Okay, so this is a pressurized steam curing. That is the difference between any other uh, steam curing, if you see. Maybe in the laboratory, you people will have uh, accelerated curing tank. So compared to that, this is a pressurized steam curing, which actually um, enhances the porosity and also uh, rapid hardening of the uh, material, which is uh, in a factory viewpoint, which is always um, an important factor. Uh, in that AAC block aspect. So as we discussed before, the AAC blocks are mostly used as infill walls. Okay, as it is used as infill walls. Uh, but what happens here in the recent times, because uh, or even though the AAC blocks originated in 1980s to uh, 1990, it was actually uh, started um, manufacturing, even though in India it has been mostly so there were even people using it in 1990s but 2000 that time onwards we have uh, factories developed in our country that time we go uh, go to use this material in a lot of construction uh, of course the main advantage what people were looking at is lightweight so once they understood it's a lightweight material they immediately use that material in the construction industry but what happened here is when they started using in construction as an infill wall itself they started getting cracks in the system. So here I had a site visit uh, three, four months before when I visited, I'm very close by ICER campus. I, th I think I, I think you know about ICER. ICER is a science institute. Uh, IITs are actually, actually technical institute. So we are very nearby around six to 12 kilometers. That's the difference. Uh, but our permanent campus are very close by two to three kilometers. So if you go to the permanent campus, they have actually constructed a hostel 
which had this AAC blocks as the infill walls. But all this AAC blocks start getting cracks. So even though it's a lightweight material, the cracks always uh, a trouble for a, a person who lives inside, right? So the serviceability criteria is always not getting satisfied. So what is the reason behind this cracks was the main question. And we understood there are researches happening in this area. So we also started a little bit research in this area. So uh, in AAC masonry blocks, if you see this cracks, as it is an infill wall, it is not a structural crack. Normally we define the cracks as a structural cracks and non-structural crack. So this could be a non-structural crack. It is not taking any load in it. So a non-structural crack, there are different combinations possible. There could be a uh, moisture change because of that you can have a shrinkage you can have thermal variation and Tirupati, if you see the temperature variation is in the range of 40 degree to 50 degree, even it sometimes goes 50 degree in um, month of May. Uh, when uh, Kerala gets a good rain, here we are in a uh, oven condition. So uh, thermal variation, it could be elastic deformation due to some indirect loading in it, can be creep. But as it is not a structural crack, we can avoid creep in it because it's not directly going to have cause with the direct loading. Uh, there is no sustained loading coming in it, but there is an always an indirect load in it. Uh, then uh, due to some other chemical reaction, because the material ex is not explored that much. So there could be some chemical reaction happening, which may be a reason for it and foundation settlement. So here in this building, anyway, there is no foundation movements or settlement of soil or anything. So it's not a cause of direct load. So either uh, moisture change or thermal variation would be the reason for it. So. What we understood is in this particular situation, AAC blocks has been used as a partition walls. There, um, uh, the elastic deformation, creep, chemical reactions and foundation movements are not observed, especially creep is not going to be there. There is no sustained loading. It. It's, uh, it's a non-structural element. You have moisture changes and thermal variation. These are the two possibilities. So instead of study, studying both the properties together and with the literature, we understood that the more, and also with the material, it's a common um, sense that the material has a lot of porous, it's a kind of uh, heavily porous material. So you, you can have a possibility of high absorption of moisture and release of moisture in high temperature. So all this can create a possibility of expansion and shrinkage. So this would be one of the reason of the failure. So to understand that this has been taken into a research level. So what we did is we took three different bricks, AC blocks, red clay brick and fly ash brick. Uh, specifically by choosing uh, clay brick is our conventional um, option. Fly ash brick is nowadays is a very common one, but it's not a lightweight material. But AAC blocks is lightweight material so that we started adopting this material very commonly in all of the constructions. So then we had, uh, tested this material in two different scenarios. One of the scenario is uh, a partial wetting, which all of us know who knows at least about minimum construction. We wet the brick before using it. So we do a partial wetting. We'll just dip it and just take it out. Then a complete wetting. We'll keep it inside the water for 24 hours. There are options possible in between also. A lot of options are there in between. We could uh, choose a, a six hour, three hours. There are different options, but at least two options I'm explaining here. Then for a different relative humidity, because what happens here is in an year, if you take the relative humidity varies from one point to another point. Obviously, 100% relative humidity, nobody is going to get. You're not going to get a saturated condition of air in uh, any, at least in part of India, if you see, it's very rare. But we tried all the relative humidity, how this uh, moisture change is happening in the material. So to understand that, uh, what we did is, as I said, we just first started with a partial wetting scenario where only we have uh, uh, 10 seconds of wetting. Okay, so here I have 10 seconds of wetting. Then I varied the relative humidity. So if you see this graph, uh, I have uh, started with uh, 100 percent, 60 percentage of relative humidity, then moved to 90 percentage of relative humidity. Okay, so here what I did is my brick is just partially wetted and just uh, kept in the humidity chamber or climate chamber. So we have a chamber where we can control the temperature and the relative humidity. Here the uh, atmospheric temperature or 25 degree, around 25 degrees Celsius constant temperature has been chosen, but varied the uh, relative humidity. So what we found is <clears throat> the AAC blocks, if you see the strain it is attaining at least 
uh, is in the expansion region. Okay, so it's a free to expand as it is a brick. I just kept in free to expand. It's in the range of at least seven hundred to eight hundred. Okay, when it uh, reach uh, ninety percentage relative humidity. So this is possible in some part of the country. And another part of the country, I may have a relative humidity of forty five degree, forty five percentage. So if I see in that range, my uh, strain is in the order of four hundred or three hundred. So here, what you can clearly understand is ASC blocks has a high strain or high expansion. Okay, this strain has been measured using strain gauges, and we have actually used different uh, material strain gauges. We have used we have used expansometers, we have used uh, length comparators. Uh, so different options has been used, but this result is from the uh, strain gauges. So uh, you have a strain variation in the order of. Uh, what to say at least 300 400 but all this most of the cases the graph if you look into it you will understand that the high strain is observed in asc compared to fly ash and clay uh, clay brick clay brick has very less uh, expansion possible okay so it is in the order of only 400 for a partial wetting scenario okay uh, as you feel this all lie in an expansion point of view because i have kept the brick to freely expand but if you, if you clearly understand here from the 90 degree or 90 percentage relative humidity to change of 70 percentage there is a uh, shrinkage is happening okay the strain is reducing but it is never reaching this neutral level okay it hasn't crossed the neutral level also so what we can understand is there is an expansion but it is not coming back to the original scenario it will come back to the original scenario maybe if you keep it for a very long uh, time if it keep it for a very long time uh, it may come back but what we understood it is become steady after some time so we haven't kept it back so there are some days we follow we understand uh, at least 2 3 days we have uh, this uh, data become stable then we never um, uh, continue that particular relative humidity we'll move to the next relative humidity and understand how the variation is so we have an expansion and shrinkage is possible but in this uh, bricks what we clearly observed is we don't have a uh, shrinkage okay, we have shrinkage but it hasn't come to the original neutral location the original length of the system and it hasn't come uh, moved to the shrinkage level here we have shrinkage because of the change in relative humidity in the system uh, so just give me a minute i am Sorry for that interruption. So uh, that's how this uh, study has been done. So what we understood is for a partial wet scenario, around seven hundred micro strain is a high, uh, very high strain is possible in the case of an ASC block. Then we did a complete wetting scenario. That means we are keeping this brick for twenty four hours in water. What happened here is your strain level has been tremendously increased. Obviously, I have a lot of water in it. lot of water has been absorbed in the brick so expansions if i may start measuring the expansions i have a lot of expansion happened in it it has come around 1400 degree or uh, sorry it has come to a uh, 1400 micro strain and it is very high in asc block but there is a slight trend change between the relative humidities if you see sometime clay brick is coming to a higher uh, micro strain compared to fly ash brick but more or less i could i could say clay brick and fly ash brick is performing uh, a uniform pattern um, uh, but it comes to asc block the variation is at least double double than of clay or fly ash brick so very high strain or very high expansion is possible in the asc block and the reasons are very obvious because we have porous material and uh, because of the porosity lot of water will be get absorbed and we'll have uh, capillary pressures inside it will create expansion in it but the interesting factors even though you're creating that same uh, relative humidity back to the normal like 60 degree or 60 percentage was my starting relative humidity if i create a 60 percentage relative humidity in the system it is not coming back to the original position so what happens here is there is a possibility of happening a chemical reaction inside so we are, we will be doing some uh, studies in that area and also 
some of the material is uh, expanded beyond that elastic limit also so that would be the reason that the brick would have been already cracked okay uh, but in this case obviously you are not observing crack because it's freely ex uh, expanding but we will be able to compare uh, what is the possible uh, expansion possible in any uh, infill wall system what happens here is the infill wall will be constructed after you have the entire frame system so when you start constructing the infill wall you'll have a brick layer you'll have a mortar layer you'll start constructing it once it finish nothing will happen because the whatever the moisture it has it is still having the same moisture if there is a relatively high change in the humidity in the uh, atmosphere which happens maybe after 2 3 months at that point of time you will start uh, getting expansion in it well, that's one of the possibility but there is another possibility because after asc block construction we do a plastering when we do plastering asc block doesn't need actually a curing uh, you don't need a water curing after this but uh, in the case of plastering we actually apply a great amount of water which get absorbed to the brick also so if you try to see the uh, expansion of the brick and the plaster it will be completely different so what happens here is and this expansion is completely restrained due to the columns and the other columns and beam uh, on the uh, circumference of this asc blocks so this expansion has been allowed it because of the restriction of expansion and obvious change of climate uh, climate and other water applying a procedure comes because of plastering even before doing painting some people do wet the system so all this uh, process uh, create lot of water absorption um, in the brick which create a large amount of expansion and that to relative expansion between the plaster and the brick will be comparably uh, comparably different so that create cracks in the system which is restraint that's only reason if i am freely allowing the movement of this brick wall this crack is never going to happen but how do we do that in practical scenario is a difficult pass you may need to have elastomeric materials in the edges to freely allow this moment of uh, brick and other material the remedies are working out uh, we are still going on that so but if you really see the moisture absorption if you see ac block it comes around 12 percentage and that to uh, between uh, partial wetting scenario and complete wetting scenario the percentages get doubled or triple so in complete wetting scenario it around 40 percentage moisture is getting absorbed in the initial stage then obviously on the some point of stage uh, if you come to a neutral uh, it will come to a neutral location uh, but asc blocks start actually sometimes shrink also later stages but it has an absorbed very significantly but if you see asc block has very high absorption of moisture and reason is very obvious because your material is having lot of porous uh the material for uh, por uh, pores in it and material has lot of porous uh, nature which eventually create this phenomenon okay so but when i think about a uh, masonry system other than the ac block i have a uh, mortar which comes in so the bedding mortar okay there are two options comes in that range also so ac blocks when it actually uh, become very popular in india at that time they started using uh, uh, giving a pre packed mix okay so they give a pre packed mix it is again a combination of cement and sand but uh, obviously the some of the component is not uh, known to us uh, we could find out we could find out easily using any chemical uh, labs or uh, using an ultrasound uh, studies and a lot of things are there to do that but we can find out this pre packed mix but i don't want to reveal but uh, there are a combinations of pre packed mix available in the market then you we have always the job site mix what we mix it up so if you see the uh, shrinkage again in these two combinations the pre pack mix shrinkage strain is in the order of 1500 or 2000 which is in micro strains but if you start using job site mix again you can try with a different uh, job site mixes like here 1.4 1.4.5 and 1.6 different we tried but all this have come in range of 600 to uh, 400 okay so it is pretty uh, low number 600 micro strain is not a big number uh, because you if you are using the same mix for the plastering your at least expansion for the job mixes or the job site mixes will be in the same order so using a job site mix can reduce the shrinkage in the system but how comparable it is with the asc block is always a questionable so we are working out on how to control the system so instead of doing this two material dip separately 
premix mix or the job site mix and the brick separately we have done a combination a system level study where we used a combination of uh, two bricks connected between using a premix motor and a uh, job site mix okay so uh, if you see here the red line represents actually an ac block with premix motor and the black line represent an ac block and uh, if you see the orange line or what to say uh, uh, a light orange line or something which actually represent a micro uh, micro strain of ac block with site mix or job site mix so what happens here is uh, ac block with premix motor there is no much change in the um, shrinkage so it eventually says that premix motor shrinkage is not clearly getting influence in the total shrinkage level uh, or it is compromising each other but in the job site mix it is going to the shrinkage level so a uh, lot of combinations we need to try further to come up with a solution but at least we understood at this point of time is ac blocks in very high uh, very high humid areas will have very high uh, volume changes and ac blocks uh, if you use in wet condition exhibit very high strain but this ac blocks in wet condition is obvious obviously come in most of your site because when you do plastering you're going to wet the surface and you will be um, curing the plastering also in that view point uh, your block will absorb lot of water so that will create a lot of expansion and it eventually create the crack in the system so high volume changes is a problem there and it, it is compared to fly ash and clay brick very high uh, volume changes there it is in the order of 700 to 800 micro strains if it is a partially wet scenario but if it is full wet scenario it comes around 1200 to 1400 range so that's very high uh, strain so uh, what people have to understand at this point of time is when we use ac block we need to be consistent with the material we are using for bed mortar and for plastering Uh, especially if you are using bed mortar as a premix material uh, in effectively what we found is uh, there is no much significant change in the shrinkage but when we start using the plastering as a job site mixer because premix mixers are always costlier than job site mixers so people start using uh, our uh, job site mixers when we start using job site mixers what happens here is i have two material which has comparably two different uh, behavior property in moisture absorption if i have two different material in two different property relative movement is not uh, freely allowed in the system obviously crack will happen so here only the entire presentation has been discussed about the possible ac block cracking in the system and how this can happen an ac block as an infill wall only we have treated here we haven't uh, uh, discussed anything about a load bearing ac block but uh, for us an ac block as an infill wall moisture change is the main reason regarding Uh, the crack in the system uh, which actually caused because we have a system where we are not allowing the free expansion of the uh, bricks obviously will create restraint in the system and crack will happen in the system and free expansion for an infill wall is not so easy to provide also uh, even though if you are providing free expansion at the end of 6 meter or 10 meter sometimes it may not be sufficient uh, because you will have bricks which comes inside will create a restraint in the system so there is a lot of research happening in this area to find out uh, how to provide the free expansion of this ac block because uh, ba basic advantage what we are getting is the lightweight and we don't want to avoid a lightweight material because of a, uh, a pretty non structural crack which is not going to create any harm to a person but uh, eventually it is creating a psychological problem in the um, uh, user so that to avoid the psychological problem alone we need to control the crack in the system in that view point how to allow this expansion of the uh, bricks how effectively we can manage that so that is the area people are right now working on a lot of research going on in that area uh, so just want to give you another research topic which still continuing so this is something i have done in my phd level i hope you have listened to this uh, from uh, professor devdas menon he has he used to explain this a lot so very recently we have another publication in that area so that is actually behavior of um, rc beam slab systems so we have come up with an economical solution how to design an rc beam slab system there were a lot of uh, misconception in this area we have we used to design the system uh, in a uh, completely different manner where we assume a beam as a stiff member and design the slab 
for a simply supported conditions or uh, appropriate boundary condition as depends on the, um, the slab i am considering then we found that the system is highly uneconomical and how to make make it more economical and how do we design the system so and we always know that uh, there is always a discrepancy we are still following in our design and analysis all our analysis are linear elastic analysis and our designs are an ultimate stage so we just factor our normal linear elastic analysis output and we'll design the system so when we factor it uh, we are approximately factoring it with all this probability studies all this load factors has come out from that we are doing this but always we are doing a linear elastic analysis on one stage and ultimate analysis ultimate design on the other stage but in the case of slab uh, alone we have this e line method which has been utilized our is456 itself has been utilized that and design all the uh, simply supported systems to the other continuous systems using e line analysis where we utilize the behavior at the ultimate stage so in this particular uh, study we have utilized utilized the same e line analysis at the ultimate stage and we come up with a procedure how to do a beam slab system design and instead of designing the system uh, to just the slab and beam separately how do we design this combinedly so we have uh, laid down this uh, uh, design procedure it has been recently accepted in aci paper it has been actually published mostly in a month or two will come in aci uh, journal uh, you can uh, read it out Uh, it has been accepted a month before uh, so the design procedure has been accepted by american concrete institute slowly that will be extended to a large system so most probably it will be widely used uh, in a design office after of course we expect that to happen immediately but we know there is always a lag happens between the research institutes to the industrial in, uh, industrial uh, application point of view so they have to get convinced beans it it is a tremendous process so hopefully it will happen in 5 to 6 years at least that's the minimum duration we are expecting so that is another research op topic just to give you a glance on it thank you everyone so uh, just to give you a view uh, of our last graduating batch so here you can see uh, professor krishna yeah i think people who have visited iit madras in early 80s or 90s would have been seen him all over the campus he was the dean uh, academics at some point of time Uh, so this is our first batch of btech students most probably you are one batch of btech students here it is not civil engineering every branch is there we had around one out five students that's the graduating number that's very low compared to mostly uh, compared to your campus uh, but uh, yeah i'm really proud to show you our first batch pass out so our second batch is also done uh, because of covid we could not do a convocation for them uh, the third batch is getting passed out in this coming uh, may month Yeah. Thank you everyone. Uh thank you Vijay ma'am. So participants if you have any uh, doubts or need some clarification you can raise your questions. Vijay uh, I am present here now. Hi sir, how are you sir? Um, when the second part uh, of your uh, seminar, I have listened. Yeah. To. May I ask you one doubt? Huh? Yes sir, go ahead. Then in, uh, in AIC bus, you are saying that uh, in your conclusion, you said that uh, in a high humid condition, it is prone to volume change. But yes. in saying that uh, in wet conditions, sir, uh, um, with respect to volume change, what is happening? It's a comparison between the high humid and the wet conditions, sir. with respect to volume change only okay uh, yeah in, in volume change also if you go there uh, you if you have high wet condition there still you are varying the relative humidity sir so in the initial region when you actually wet it completely a lot of water has been absorbed there but what happens here is that moisture absorption is in the range of 40% because it has been moist uh, done for very long time in each other case we have only 10 second duration the moisture absorption in the range of 12 percentage you have a high porous material then it uh, gradually comes down it gradually comes down with the re different relative humidities if you see uh, it gradually comes down but in the case of full wet scenario it come to a neutral position but when it comes to a partial wet uh, scenario it even go to a negative uh, level that means 
beyond the moisture or whatever the, it has absorbed it actually maybe try uh, try to um, uh, reduce the weight of the system so this is by weight it's not by volume it's by weight so weight has been come down beyond what it has been absorbed so it can happen because uh, it it had an initial water some some amount of water inside the pores and which has uh, happened from 10 second uh, duration and in the relative humidity stage there are cycles of changes happening inside so some amount of water which is preserved inside also would have been um, uh, evaporated in some relative humidity stage that's the reason it is going to the negative scale but in the case of full wet scenario uh, it is coming to almost a neutral position i could say it is coming to its original uh, level uh, of uh, water content inside the brick so the weight it's it's just a weight comparison but what we have discussed before is this the micro strain level what is the expansion happening so in that case i think it's clearly indicating that you have an expansion and when you have a different uh, relative humidity comes out so you have a high expansion here at this this has high expansion stage and it has coming down you have a shrinkage actually happening here but it has in moved to the complete shrinkage it has in uh, come back to the original and moved to the other shrinkage level but here you have a gradual uh reduction in the expansion that means it's a shrinkage happening here uh, and it is reaching some ideal number okay but we try two three cycles to make it uh, it never comes to the zeroth level so some permanent expansion is happening in the system that is the point here you can see here some permanent expansion has always happened which is around 600 but in the case of clay brick and fly ash brick the permanent expansion is very low which is around 200 micro strain that's it uh so but in the case of ac block you have a permanent expansion of around 600 to 500 500 to 600 micro strain okay thank you thank you ma'am uh, can you hear me yes i could so ma'am uh, when you talked about advantages you said it's energy efficient right yeah so yeah can you explain how is that possible actually okay see energy expansion point of view starting okay i could start from the component level of material i am um, i am not using uh, the same amount of cement as required for a normal concrete that itself is the first stage of energy efficiency because uh, if i need to produce one uh, one bag of 50 kg of cement how much is the carbon dioxide emission and how much is the energy i am required for that is not e required for me in this particular stage so percentage of cement is one content then when it comes to obviously there is uh, another energy utilization is happening when i do uh, autoclave process a steam curing process but if i compare this with the material content i am using and the energy required to make that material uh, it is comparably less okay so uh, the, there is a comparison happened uh, there is a study actually the life cycle analysis it's called normally life cycle analysis when you talk about life cycle analysis of any material it could be brick like this what i am talking about it, the life cycle start from the material component level so it starts from the uh, sand cement and the other ingredient i am using how how the manufacturing of that material happens from that to the uh, a complete process so here as you could see that in some of the material i am reduce the amount of cement uh, it is obvious reduction and along with that i have replaced some amount cement with fly ash so the fly ash uh, all of us know that it's an energy efficient material because it's a by product of some other uh, product so that is also coming out then from there i have saved a lot but the same time i'm using some amount of energy for my autoclave so if i do my life cycle analysis of this material at the end of it you will understand that the energy which i use for a normal concrete block and compared to an ac block Uh, it will be comparable uh, it's not even actually in the comparable level you have a great amount of energy efficiency or great amount of saving of energy is there so that is how that conclusion has come but if you really want to work in that area you need to do life cycle analysis there are a lot of literature available how to do a life cycle analysis of any material uh, you can uh, work you can actually look into it uh, so life cycle analysis for for a building if you start if you instead of brick if you start to think about a building it starts from the component level of the material to the transportation storing um, curing every every process has to be included that accurately you can calculate the energy efficiency or what is the energy consumed by each of the material 
So uh, this is just a life cycle analysis. I haven't explained any life cycle analysis here. I just told you this is the advantages, but you could do this through life cycle analysis. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, I I want I need a color clarification. Please go ahead. Ma'am, uh, you have said that the volume changes may happen due to the water absorption in the porous porous part of the bricks, right? Mm -hmm. So we are uh, previously you said that aluminium oxide is uh, used to, to create it's some powder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, previously, you said that aluminium oxide is used to create some porous in the brick material. Mm -hmm. So, if we minimize that uh, amount of uh, aluminium oxide, we can uh, reduce the porous, na? so that uh, we can eliminate the water absorption, right? Then we are yeah, actually but... creating uh, another issue. No, I want the material to be lightweight, right? I okay. want my my first objective of this material is to be have a lightweight material. Okay. If I I could reduce to an extent, I could find out an optimum solution for optimum amount of aluminium required for this. That okay. already people have worked out. So uh, if I further reduce this, I'm reducing the possibility of gas generation, producing reducing the possibility of porous in the material. Obviously, the material become more dense. If it is become dense, that's not useful for me because my idea of creating lightweight material is to have a good performance in especially in seismic zones. Okay. Uh, very high seismic zone area. I can reduce the total inertia force comes to the system, right? So I want a lightweight material. That is my first objective. The crack, as it is a non-structural crack, uh, all structural engineers know it is not going to create any issue to us. But normally, a normal user will get a psychological problem. So our aim is to avoid that psychological problem alone. We cannot compromise on our uh, density of the material. So we can use this as an infill material, but not a structural member, right? It is not a uh, uh, suggested solution for a load bearing wall. Okay, but ah, I have okay. seen one or two people, even uh, myself, has been visited some places where they have used AAC block as a load bearing wall. It is not recommendable because in uh, load bearing wall, again, along with this, you have a heavy load coming in and you have a heavy porous material. So creep will be very high. You won't be seeing that in the immediate time. You'll see in one, one year or two years after, you'll find out that a lot of cracks will generate other than this cracks. So these cracks are just the atmosphere changes creating these issues, right? But other cracks are due to sustained loading, which is not actually acceptable. My man, uh, do you have conducted any durability tests, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. A lot of durability studies are happening in this area. Here, even our campus also a lot of studies are happening. I haven't explained much. Um, so here, uh, durability point of view, uh, chemical intrusion is not a big deal for us. So we, we know that it will happen because it's porous material. So uh, it is not a big problem for us, but we will be thinking about durability and uh, creep is also not a problem for us. So shrinkage is already studied here. And we are also looking at the heat aspect and we are also looking at the temperature changes it is creating inside the room. All those aspects are actually studied here. Because uh, there is a high possibility for efflorescence, efflorescence no? It can happen. It can happen. As it is a porous okay. material, okay. it can happen. But uh, we are actually uh, plastering it. It depends on the thickness of the plaster and the, comp uh, the composition of the plaster really uh, influence this matter. So uh, the plast anyway, this material has to be plastered. It's not um, uh, without plastering brick. It's not the finished brick. So you need to plaster this brick. So uh, always there is there is a hundred percentage chance that every cases of AAC block, whatever you have seen in the video, that is actually with the, um, some perforation in it. They have created just to create maybe a compound wall. We don't want to plaster it. They would have created okay. that. Uh, but uh, most of the infill walls will be plain uh, brick. So in that plain brick, you will be plastering it. So you can control a, an extent with the plaster. Uh the normal uh, mortar, we can, uh, uh, whether we can use a normal mortar for this uh, plastering purposes? We are plastic. using now normal mortar. That is the problem. Okay. We are using normal mortar. That is the problem. So that is something we are, because we have three different materials now. One AC block is a completely different material. We have a premix mortar that's a different material. And you have a plaster that's a different material. So three okay. different material coming in combination. So the, re the relative movement or happening in these three material with the three different conditions is completely different. We hear it's a complex scenario. Okay. So as much as possible, having a uniform material is the best solution because your expansions or contractions or shrinkage, whatever happening is will be in the same order. Okay. So, uh, but in, in the practical situation right now, what people are using is they're using a brick 
with the premix uh, motor for the bedding and uh, normal our no normal job site uh, mix for the plastering so the shrinkage and expansion if you look at these three material as different material shrinkage and expansion for these three different material is completely different it's not even in comparable range so that is a problem that's actually creating a relative movement which eventually create a crack in the system in addition to the normal expansion and i need one suggestion ma'am from you yeah uh, in my uh, my friends are using this a uh, ac black in the construction mm -hmm. uh, they they are facing the problem of the bonding of mortar between uh, the ac black and the mortar ma'am so mm -hmm. there, there is any can you give any solution for that what is the mm -hmm. mortar they are using uh, they are using mo uh, normal mortar yeah and also the mortar they as a got from the manufacturer or the premix mortar uh, premix the pre packed premix mortar yeah yes, yes, but there is a bonding problem now so premix pre uh, mortar may not have that bonding issue most probably our job site mixer will have the issue because yeah. we are using some kind of additives in the pre uh, packed premix mortar which okay. is creating this uh, because this finished surface compared to any other mortar if you see this have a very finished smooth surface because it's cut after cutting only it has been gone for aerated um, uh, so our autoclave process so it has a very finished surface because of this finishing surface uh, only this uh, mortar is not actually having uh, very good combine or uh, what to say very packing situation with this uh, brick but the premix mortar they have created a, some kind of additives in it which actually uh, initiate some point of reaction with this brick okay, okay. so using premix mortar is the best solution to have this uh, bond okay. uh, uh, but uh, obviously uh, it is not effective for us to use or economical for us to use a premix mortar for a plastering purpose so that's the reason we have three combinations of material in our site uh, so which which is a, co a complex scenario you will have crack in the system 100% is sure when you have temperature changes or moisture changes you will be actually curing this plastering right so obviously yeah. your brick will absorb the water it will expand if it is not freely expandable obviously you have crack in the system so it is bound to have cracks in the system how to avoid is providing actually some kind of uh, expansion joints which allow this expansion freely uh, which is not possible in the case of load bearing uh, system in infills you can actually do uh, you can actually fill that area with some other material so that this expansion is possible and using uniform material there are recommendations we are working out how to go with this uniform material for bedding and plastering uh, which eventually control a uniform uh, expansion instead of uh, uh, differential expansion in the system yeah oh. i'll come up slowly yeah. anyway a lot of companies are also working in this area okay. so we are uh, working along with singobian so i i don't know how many of you know singobian it's yeah. a yeah so they have uh, they also have a similar um, uh, plant uh, which is they are working out uh, for this uh, brick so they are also working out because it has to come to the industry then only it will be uh, really effective in the site so we are working along with them to work out how to make this more economical solution with a uniform uh, bedding and the plastering system so hopefully it will come out so very soon okay yeah. thank you very much for a nice uh, clear clear thank, thank you, you. Ma'am, yes. Ma'am, how do you think the adverse climatic conditions of uh, our country could affect no, no. the blocks? Chor that day. Me ani tango tuwa. I could not hear. Me ani the chor, eh? Ba. Ani chire. Ma'am, ini lathe idu kudta irunda. Hello. 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 Am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Please. Can you repeat? Yeah, ma'am. Ma'am, yes. uh, how do you think the adverse climatic conditions of our country uh, would affect the AAC blocks? Uh, like we almost have an extreme climatic condition, and uh, since it is al already exposed to some cracks, uh, would you think the climatic conditions can have an additional effect? Our climatic condition has actually created the issue. That's the reason this become a problem for research itself. So we have a wide variation of relative humidity and moisture in our country. So if you see. humidity of kerala and um, andhra which is very close by okay uh, i'm i'm thinking close by just because i'm not comparing kerala and uh, kashmir so we are very close by uh, andhra and uh, kerala if you see, at least compare the relative humidity of tamil nadu and kerala there is a significant difference and the temperature if you think about both of us temperature there is a significant difference so uh, 
there there is an effect always uh, our client that is the reason this become a research topic itself so uh, there is a lot of influence of our climate condition which is actually relative humidity and temperature which is very significant in a shrinkage view point yeah okay. it will is there any remedy uh, remedial measures that can be taken yeah that is something uh, right now going on uh, most probably uh, see uh, the simplest solution i can give you is use uniform material uh, as i discussed with the previous uh, questioner uh, the ac block bedding material and the plaster if it is uniform material you will be able to control at least you will have uniform uh, expansion or uniform shrinkage and the other option is allow the expansion or shrinkage in the system so that there won't be any crack in the system so these are the possible output but how do this come to an industrial level uh is something we are working out yeah okay thank you ma'am thank you very much yeah um, uh can you hear me yes ma'am uh, why is it said that uh, we should provide a plastering uh, if that brick is very finely uh, polished uh, why should we provide plastering above that you you have bed joints no you have actually mortar joints in it right so uh, we don't we don't like to see this bed joints right if you see this uh, ac blocks i don't know it's coming out of this yeah just a minute see this you have a, even though this surface this portion it's it's very finished point you have still a bedding point right so you need to provide plastering in it Yeah. Anything else? Any more notes? Yes. Okay, now I'm inviting uh, Ms. Harida Hariharan for a plus in the attitude. 